During World War II, Germany's tank experts became household names, and one of these was Ernst Barkmann. In one engagement in 1944, he destroyed nine tanks. In 1945, he knocked out four T-34s and brought the total score of the Das Reich Division to 3,000 enemy tanks destroyed to date, and his personal score to over 80 kills. Who was Ernst Barkmann? What made him such a successful tank commander? How did he manage to survive so many encounters when always heavily outnumbered? How did he destroy nine Sherman tanks in one day? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Born on August 25th, 1919, the son of a farmer, Barkman joined the Nazi party on September 1st, 1938, and served in the Reich Labor Service from November 1938 to March 1939. Barkman then joined the Waffen-SS on April 1st, 1939, and served as a machine gunner in Poland, where he was wounded, receiving the wound badge in black. Assigned to the 2nd Waffen-SS Division, Das Reich, he participated as an infantryman in the invasion of France and earned the infantry assault badge. During Operation Barbarossa, he was seriously wounded again in Ukraine in July of 1941, receiving the wound badge in silver and promoted to corporal. After almost a year of recovery, he was assigned to a training unit for Dutch volunteers in Holland in 1942. Then he transferred to tanks. Then in late 1942, he returned to the Eastern Front and joined 2nd Company, 1st Battalion, 1st Panzer Regiment of Das Reich. He was assigned as a gunner on a Panzer III with the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, fighting at Kharkov and Kursk in 1943, and his skills saw him promoted to sergeant and given command of his own Panzer IV. His crew was quite successful, and he received the Iron Cross 2nd and 1st class as well as the Panzer Assault Badge. Barkman became a master of camouflaging his tanks, using natural foliage or even canvas painted, and using tree branches to break up his tank's outline. During the Third Battle of Kharkov and the Battle at the Mias River, Barkman was transferred into the new Panzerkampfwagen 5 Panther. The Panther 5 was designed as an answer to the Soviet T-34 medium tank, and it was considered the best medium tank developed by any country during the war. It mounted a high-velocity 75mm KWK 42L70 cannon with a range of 9,850 meters and a muzzle velocity of over 3,000 feet per second. At 100 meters, the armor-piercing round could penetrate 112 mill millimeters of armor, and at 500 meters, it could penetrate 124 millimeters, or almost five inches of armor. In contrast, the M4 Sherman only had three inches of frontal armor, so direct hits were a definite kill. It had 55 degrees sloped frontal armor similar to the T-34 and wide tracks for cross-country movement, and weighed in at 44 tons. It had a top speed of between 29 and 34 miles per hour and a range of about 62 miles cross-country, and 160 miles on roads. Das Reich was relocated to Bordeaux, France, anticipating a southern invasion, then ordered north due to the Allied invasion of Normandy in 1944. Along the way, Allied fighter bombers and partisan attacks were constant, but in the first week of July, Barkman's unit met with Allied forces in the St. Lowe area and in the Bocage region. His Panther Company was thrown against greater numbers of American-made M4 Shermans and M3 Stuart tanks used by American, Canadian, and British forces. On July 8th, he destroyed his first Sherman, two more destroyed and a third damaged on July 12th before relocating and destroying another three Shermans later that day. His Panther was hit by an anti-tank round starting a fire, which he and the crew extinguished, but the tank went in for repairs, and he was promoted to lieutenant. On July 14th, Barkman was given orders to recover four Panthers cut off behind enemy lines, and he managed to reach them and destroyed three more Shermans in the process. Later that same day, he was sent to recover wounded German soldiers captured by the American forces and succeeded. Upon his return, his Panther had been repaired. On July 26th, Barkman's Panther had an engine problem and was sent to the field workshop where it was attacked by Allied fighter bombers and hit again in the engine compartment. On the morning of July 27th, his Panther was repaired, but he was now cut off from the rest of the company and was on his way to rejoin it. His legend was cemented this day when he entered the village of Lalori. German soldiers warned him of an enemy tank column approaching, which may have been a Canadian unit. Barkman parked his tank under a group of oak trees, well camouflaged, at the shoulder of a crossroads where the enemy was coming. Barkman waited for the full column to come into view 400 meters away, 15 tanks and support trucks, 
Allowing them to start turning on the bend, he fired. He destroyed the first two Shermans, as well as a fuel truck. Then he hit the last two tanks visible in the column, trapping the rest in the middle, while his gunner fired into the others, scoring hits. The Shermans called in air support, and a Hawker Typhoon fired rockets, which resulted in two of Barkman's crew being wounded and his tank heavily damaged. Meanwhile, Barkman destroyed two more Shermans that tried to go around the flaming wrecks. Then, two more Shermans, seeing the damaged Panther, came in for the kill. Barkman's loader and gunner jumped into action, and those two tanks were quickly destroyed. Repairing their tank quickly, Barkman retreated his Panther to the nearby village of Neufberg. He was pursued by the remaining Shermans, but managed to destroy his last one for the day, for a total of nine tanks destroyed, with four more tanks damaged and several trucks destroyed. Barkman was wounded again, but managed to get his last tank back to German lines. On July 28th, Barkman reached Coutances and rejoined his company. During the two-day period, he had destroyed 15 Shermans and a dozen other vehicles. On July 30th, the Americans surrounded Granville, as Barkman was towing a damaged Panther but was able to break out. In order to destroy their disabled panther, the other crew decided to set it on fire, and soon, by mistake, both panthers caught fire. Both crews were forced to make their way to the German lines, seven kilometers away on foot. When Barkman reached Arranche on August 5th, he was welcomed and congratulated by his comrades who had heard of his exploits. For his bravery and skill, Ernst Barkman was recommended for the Knight's Cross on August 27th, and it was awarded on September 5th, along with his wound badge in gold. Barkman later took part in the Ardennes Offensive, in December of 1944, where, on December 25th, he was again seriously wounded when he drove into a group of American tanks from the 2nd Armored Division. Outnumbered, Barkman managed to knock out a few Sherman tanks. One Sherman rammed a Barkman's Panther but caused little damage, but both tanks became stuck together and Barkman's engine stalled out. After a few minutes, Barkman's mechanic managed to restart the engine, and the Panther retreated with a blocked turret. The Sherman that rammed him gave chase, but even with the damage, Barkman's driver pivoted the tank and then knocked out the Sherman they had just escaped. His own Panther was later scrapped. In March 1945, Barkman was once again fighting with the Soviets in the area of Stilweissenberg. At that time, Das Reich was exhausted by nonstop fighting and lack of replacement tanks. Barkman's unit alone had only nine fully operational vehicles, from which three were soon lost to the new Joseph Stalin tanks. The remaining six Panthers were ordered to link up with the remnants of the Panzer Regiment of the 1st SS Panzer Division Leibstandarte, Adolf Hitler, commanded by SS Standartenfuhrer Colonel Jochen Piper. By April of 1945, Barkman saw action south of Vienna during the fighting in Austria. There, his Panther was hit by mistake when a German soldier fired a Panzerfaust anti-tank rocket at a T-34, which missed and hit his Panther. Barkman and his crew members were all wounded, and as they tried to drive the damaged tank away, it was disabled in a huge bomb crater, so the crew destroyed and then abandoned the tank. Ernst Barkman was able to reach a British zone of occupation where he was taken into captivity. He was later released in 1946. During the war, Barkman and his crew were credited with the destruction of at least 82 Soviet, British, and U.S. tanks, 136 miscellaneous armored fighting vehicles, and 43 anti-tank guns. He returned to his hometown of Kisdorf and became a fireman, then became the fire chief, and also served as the town mayor from which he retired. Ernst Barkman died on July 27, 2009, at the age of 89. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas, and we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.